Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. nerd friend and hello my nerd friend and hello all of our nerd friends out there <laughs> we have rather um well i was gonna say we have rather a lot of them but considering you know it's it's a bit more than just me you and my dad um we have some we have some listeners so hello hello to you listener hello listeners yeah th- considering this started out as you me and your dad mm. yep. uh this is <laughs> this is really huge now uh so thank you all for listening. So huge, in fact, that we now have merch. I spent I spent a ridiculous amount of my free time designing merchandise. So if anyone wants some merchandise, yes. this is the hard sell now. You can find it if you go to... Uh, actually, I don't know where you can find it. I will link it in today's episode notes, and it will probably be on a website that I need to design very shortly. Right. Mm. And I'll... I'll put it into the outro copy. Yeah. That way we always mention it. We're going to, we're so on top of things. You can look cool in your set phasers gear. You can look cool in your set phasers gear. Speaking of, this is Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. And uh, we have been discussing for the last many weeks, Star Trek Picard season one. And today we will be, dis- oh, today's star date. Oh my God. I'm completely out of order. Today's star date is star date 2190423.6. And we will be discussing the season finale of Star Trek Picard season one, Et in Arcadia Ego, part two. Part two. It's like Hot Shots part two. Part two. Wait, 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 wait. Part two. This is a, uh, what do you think? I mean, a very satisfying ending, don't you think? Oh, such a great climax to this season. This series, in fact. I loved yeah. it. I absolutely loved it. Everything just came together so nicely. I had no idea it was going to come together this way. Do you know what I mean? It was a delight. And uh, so maybe we should just run it down. Shall we uh, make it so? Shall we engage <laughs> in a rundown? Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. It's time to run it down. Can you run? Yes. So I drink God. Can't believe I've not said that this whole season. Make it so engaged. Yeah. It's time. Yeah, it is time. For season two, we can just in- we'll engage and make it so like crazy. Mm. Season okay. two of Star Trek. Picard. Deal. Yeah. That's right. Well, this episode has everything. But as you may recall, previously on Star Trek Picard, uh, the crew of La Serena was able to locate the home planet of the synths, uh, with Soji taking them through a transwarp conduit that only Borg and synthesizer people know about, I guess. And they were followed by Narek and his uh, serpent head ship or whatever, and they duked it out for a bit in space, and then Seven showed up with the artifact, which was a, a Borg cube with Elnor and a couple of XBs in tow, and, and they were about to go crazy in space, and then these giant orchids flew up from the surface, uh, defying all physics, and wrapped all the ships in the air and powered them down, they all plummeted through the atmosphere and crashed, and they showed up on the planet, and this card goes to what... Rafi calls Synthville and they talk and they meet and they find out that there's a the son of Soong is the one who was working with Bruce Maddox to make all these synths and so she finds out where she's from but then they're betrayed by the synths because one of them uh Sutra does a mind meld with Jurati to figure out what the admonition is but she says the admonition is a promise for the synths and they decide to lock up Picard to prevent him from thwarting them on their their attempt to call forth uh, some superior artificial life. And meanwhile, a Romulan fleet led by Commodore O 
is bearing down on this planet to wipe clean their sector of synthesized life. That was previously. So we begin this episode, cold open is Narek. He shows up at the artifact crash site. You may remember he he was let out of his 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 prison ship by uh well under dubious circumstances, but we're pretty sure Sutra was involved and one of these synths was killed. Uh he shows up and he hears there are people working inside. And uh, Elnor and Seven of Nine are talking and they're working with the XBs and Elnor asks Seven all this stuff about like, what do the XBs do? People hate them everywhere. Maybe it's better to end themselves. And Seven's like, well, I'm basically an XB. Should I end my life? And Elnor says, well, I'd miss you if you did it. Narek is moving through the artifact secretly trying to sneak and sneak, I guess, just sneak and sneak. And, uh, He's held up at knife point by who? <gasps> Nerissa, his sister, Ooh, with whom he has a weird and inappropriate relationship. And she asks him if he's found the synths or had sex with any of them or killed any. And Narek says, yes, no, and he killed one. And then uh, Nerissa shows Narek where she's been hiding because I guess she's been, um, she kind of hitched a ride on the artifact, seeming to know somehow that they were going to follow uh La Serena. Meanwhile, Picard is still under house arrest. He's in like some sort of uh, quarters in uh, Capellius uh, City Station, whatever it's called. And uh, he's, you know, contemplating life and deep things such as Picard does, even when he's a prisoner. And he talks to a, a butterfly and the butterfly flies away and he goes, lucky you. And Soji shows up and she gets into the room via a retinal scan that will become important later. And she asks Picard how he is. And he's like, I'm not doing great. I'd love to be free. And she's like, oh, we can't let you free because look at it from my point of view. He's like, if you call these people down, they're going to kill our organic life. Don't become Seb Cheneb the destroyer. And she says, well, but if I don't, then the Romulans are going to come here and destroy us. And you got to think about how it feels for us. And she's like, you can't stop us. I'm going to build the beacon and I'm going to call forth our, our saviors. So it's credits back inside the artifacts. Narek and Nerissa argue. Narek basically has a plan. He says he's taking a bunch of grenades. They're very specific kind of grenades. I wrote it down. They're called like gangle dank, bedinkle dank grenades. Trumped me them. And then cyanide. They're called them. Trumdmian Beringle Dink grenades. Anyway, he's taking a bunch of these grenades. They're called like molecular something or other. And he's going to use them, he says, to destroy the orchids. That way the orchids that remain won't attack the Romulan fleet that's coming. And then uh, he has like some kind of outburst with Nerissa. And he's like, it's me. I'm the one who figured out where they lived. And I'm the one who fell in love with the synth. And I'm the one that found this planet. And uh, you need me. Uh, he calls himself a a washout and a family disgrace. I had to say, the second time watching this, I was like, curious what this family was like. You know what I mean? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Auntie went crazy, right? Auntie Ramda. Uh, Auntie Ramda. All right. Their parents died and Auntie Ramda took them in, but then they're all Zatvash and Tal Shiar somehow. And anyway, I don't know. Romulans can be interesting. They don't seem to have been very nurtured. As no, not nurtured in the right way. And uh, so anyway, Nerissa says, fine, go ahead. I'll do the hard work, you loser. And he leaves uh, to go do what he's going to do. And he's followed by... Dun, dun, dun. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Oh. Elnor. Elnor, the male killer Romulan warrior nun, is on his trail. <laughs> I've been practicing that all day. Good so that job. I can say... That was perfect. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, back on La Serena, Rios and Rafi left with a weird artifact that they were given by the synths, that uh, artifact, a tool. Basically, they were like, use this to fix your ship. And Rafi was like, how does it work? And they were told, like, uh, just use your imagination. So they're there, and they're kind of trying to figure out how it works. And eventually, Rafi comes up with the idea, that, like, you just take it, and I think just point it at what you want it to do, and imagine the thing that's broken fixed and see if that works. And Rios is dubious, but it does work. And the power comes back up on the ship and they're like, ha ha ha. And Rafi's like, tell me I'm right, baby. You know? And then they hear 
some clanking sounds uh, coming from outside of the ship. And Rios is like, I know what that sound is, in his brooding way. But meanwhile, meanwhile back on in Capellius City, uh, Dr. Sung and Gerati, doctors Sung and Gerati, are working in the lab <laughs> late one night. Uh, it's the daytime. And they're trying to, basically they're trying to transform, figure out Maddox's work of transferring an organic mind into a positronic matrix. And uh, Sung is being super weird and creepy as he is wont to be. And he's like, oh, you're a great mother to these robots, dedicating your life and sacrificing it for their betterness and all that stuff. And then he's like, all right, I got to go do some stuff. And Gerati is, seems, even though she, she kowtowed to them earlier, she seems like nonplussed. Mm. No tears. No and tears. No but she's, she, ooh, she looks She looks stern. She's like, I'm not their mother. She's all cried out. Yeah, she said, I'm not their mother. Um, asshole. Uh, Rios and Rafi find out that someone is throwing rocks at the the ship to get their attention. Who should it be but Narek? Oh, a brooding, evil, murdering Romulan Zotvash washout. Zotvash washout. Another tongue twister oh, for us. <laughs> Zotvash washout. I'm a Zotvash washout. And I'm a Kirillin warrior Romulan nun. Yes, and we're talking about what was a specific Star Trek? Star Trek specific? Star Trek specific. Oh, fuck. Star, Star Trek. S- Star Trek specifics. Star Trek. And we're talking Star Trek specifics. Great. We have, we have, alt- we have alter egos now. Um, <laughs> we know what we're doing for Halloween, listeners. I'll be a Zavash washout. You can be a killer Romulan warrior nun. Oh, so close. <laughs> killer warrior Romulan. Well, killer- yes, but I, I first want to be Tasha Yar. And then I will be a killer warrior Rummy We can nun. be both. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. We can do a costume change. And uh, she was sort of Romulan in, in TNG for a bit. Sort of. Yeah. Killer warrior. And then. Uh, okay. Where was I? What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Zadvash. It's Narak. Yeah. Yeah. I said Zadvash wash out and went completely off the rails. Mm. Narak is like, hey, what's up, man? Uh, I'm here to like tell you what's going on turncoat uh, we got to stop the the synths from uh doing something awful to us oh yeah molecular grenades whatever and um rios is like what what do you what do you want and eric's like we need to save the universe and we can keep fighting or we can work together it's your call rios uh musiker in the meantime is trying to musiker rafi musiker is trying to communicate with Picard, but it's not working. And they're like kind of talking about what the plan is. And, and Narek, I guess he must've overheard before he got busted out of jail, the whole plan with the, the transmitter and sending it to the alien life. Anyway, he knows what it is. He says it's the, the Romulan equivalent of Ragnarok or the apocalypse. And he's talking about all that. And then who should show up, but, Elnor, our killer warrior Romulan, and he holds a, a sword to Narek's neck, and he's like, in Romulan, he's like, choose life. And Narek, very British, evil, bad guy turned good, is like, oh yes, I, I choose most earnestly to live. Laughing without opening my mouth. Gerati is in the lab late one night, and she's trying to they're trying to like transfer saga's memories because she got killed as a as a gift for her sister but the damage to the the optical ginkle dank has made it hard to do the data stream and Gerati says she's been working on the the thing for sung's golem because he wants to transfer his consciousness into the golem so he cannot be killed by the the super artificial alien people that are coming, but some of the files are encoded, she says, and Maddox says, ha ha I'm able to figure that stuff out. You just let me work on it, and you keep doing the, working on the eyes so we can finish this whole thing. And then once he's out of the way, Gerardi starts cutting up Saga for parts, and she's like, sorry, we don't know why. Uh, in the meantime, they're having a good old time around a fire. Back at La Serena, Elnor, Narek, Rios, and Rafi. That's a TV show I'd watch. They're talking about the Judgment Day thing, which has a name, Ganmadan or whatever. 
and the Inception Ebb and the whole story is that there's two sisters who create this apocalypse and one is called the like four foreteller and the other one is the destroyer and Elnor knows about it because he's Romulan, but he's also like not into, he thinks it's ridiculous. And then Rafi's like, so do you think she's asking Narek, like, you think this is real? And he's like, I don't think it's a, a myth. I think it's history and history has a pesky way of repeating itself. And, uh, I mean, the Romulan fleet is still on its way and Commodore O has gone full bad guy. And she's like, mm, yes, time for our evil plans to take place. Ha ha ha. We will kill all the synths, one little village of synths. Yes, kill them, kill them all. Leave none alive. Ex- what does she say? She says exterminate them? No, sterilize them. That's Ster- she she says. says we're going to sterilize them or whatever. Um, that's great. Uh, so Narek and the remaining crew of La Serena are like, we got to get there and destroy that antenna. They come up with a crazy plan. They're going to take the grenades that Narek has brought and put them inside... Um, Narek's going to pretend to be the prisoner of Rafi and Rios and Elnor, and they're going to put the grenades that he has inside a soccer ball. Uh, the soccer balls that Rios has, because remember Rios was playing soccer that one time with his shirt off before he and Gerardi got it on. Got down to business. They got down to, down to business. And um, that's their plan. Uh, so they start doing that. But when they get to Capellius Station, um, all their stuff is confiscated because they're stopped by two of the synths. Meanwhile, inside the station, uh, Jirati has taken one of Saga's eyeballs, I guess the one that was working, and she uses it on the retinal scanner. I told you that was coming back. They use it on the retinal scanner to get into Picard's room and bust him out. She's like, we got to stop this stuff from happening. We got to get to La Serena. And then... A comedy of errors, because obviously the crew of La Serena has come there to save Picard and to destroy the uh, antenna. But also, at the same time, Sun comes back to the lab and he finally sees the decoded information from Saga's eyeball brain information. And he sees that it wasn't the prisoner who killed Saga. Not alone. He had help. None other than Sutra. (laughs) (laughs) I can't do it. You can't just just leave it to me. It's my sound effect. I want to gasp. I just can't do it loud. <clears throat> it's a <clears throat> no. Well, that sounds like <clears throat> no. Yours is better. Okay, so uh, I'll never be doing fully Listen, for that. You do all of the coolest sound effects. I can just do a gasp. Well, you do plenty. Uh, so basically, so now Sung is wise to the fact that. Uh, Sutra has done all this to set this whole thing in motion, created this, basically killed one of their own in order to get everyone behind the idea of starting this transmitter to get the, the alien life to come save them. And so Sung is totally messed up. The team from La Serena, they show up and they see that the tower is almost complete, but apparently they need line of sight to destroy the tower with the molecular grenades. And Rafi's like, how are we going to do that without being seen? And Sung comes up from behind them and says, yes, how will you? Or something different. But he says, yes, how will you do that? Uh, Picard and Gerati, meanwhile, have gotten back to La Serena. <gasps> It's abandoned. No one's there because they're all trying to do the other thing. And Gerardi was thinking, okay, maybe that's what happened. But Picard is like, give me a status report in the Romulans. And Gerardi's like, we got like 15 minutes, seven minutes until they show up on the planet. And even if Starfleet Command got your message, they would still be behind the Romulans. Picard's like, we got to find a way to stall them. So they get the ship going. They fly up into space. And uh, they, you know, Picard's like, we've got to find a way to stop the Romulans, but also stop the synths. And and Jirati's like, I'm not sure how you're going to do that. And he's like, you got to know that even though they're very powerful, they're still basically children and their teachers were two hermits, Sung and Maddox. And so we need to teach them something other than fear. And Jirati's like, how will you do that? And Picard says, the way children learn most things, by example. Oh, Picard. Uh, meanwhile, Sutra is like, Hey everybody down at Capella station, we're about to open up this portal and, uh, cause death to rain down on all the organics here. So get ready for them to die. Meanwhile, Sung approaches and he has the two cents that, uh, I guess are on his side. He tells him to watch Musiker and Illinois, uh, Illinois, oh boy, the names finally exploded in my brain. Illinois. 
the killer warrior Romila Nunn. You did such a good job. Rafi and Elnor. Sung goes to talk to Sutra. He's like, hey, I saw you needed to do the thing. I know what you did. They needed an emotional jilt. Sutra's like, of course, yeah, I'm so glad you understand that we needed to do what we needed to do. And then when he gets close enough, he deactivates her. Click! And she falls to the ground. Boo! Completely off. And he's like, ah, oh, turns out, even though I tried, you synths are no better than humanity. He's sad, and then he nods to Rafi, and then Rafi whistles, and then Rio shows up, and he's got his soccer balls, and he's like, it's time to destroy this thing. But Soji is still working on the emitter, and uh, the transmitter, and she's not going to get out of the way while they try to blow it up with the grenades. Serena, La Serena enters orbit. Gerardi's like, Picard, do you have a plan? Picard's like, no, I'm trying to fly this ship. I'm an old man. I haven't flown a ship in a long time. Gerardi's like, now would be a good time to tell me, and he's like, one impossible thing at a time. Soji continues to work on the transmitter. Narek is there, and he's all, nah, used to be your boyfriend, sort of. Please get away. But she won't. And then Rios tries to activate one of the grenades, but Soji catches it like a, you know, a robot. And she throws it back and explodes somewhere else. And then uh, Soji continues to work on that. And uh, then aboard the artifact, Nerissa is trying to get the artifact's weapons. Remember Nerissa? She's on the board cube. She's trying to get the artifact weapons to... How did she get there? She, I assume she hitched a ride. She was on the cube. I thought she got of the pushed cube. off. No, no, she's about to get pushed off. What are you talking about? Maybe I've just derailed this. I was like, how did she get on the cube? Because she was, she was been on the cube. I thought she got kicked off the cube. I thought the last time we saw her, there was like, the Borgs had woken up and she got off the ship. She transported to another ship. Yeah. But somehow she transported back, I guess. No, you're right. That is a good question. How does she get back on the freaking cube? Thank you, continuity people. Yeah, because she... That's why I was like, how did she just get back onto this, this Borg ship when the whole point was they were going to start a war with her? So she tried to pull the plug on the Borgs and Seven woke them all up and then she had to get herself off. They transported her off the ship. She transported herself off the ship. Yes, she transported herself off the ship. But she may have been able to transport. I don't know that she wasn't able to transport back before they left. She could have transported herself to a secreted location. Okay, let's go with that. Listen, I'm trying to tie the things together because it doesn't really make sense, but obviously they wanted Nerissa on the ground. I know. That was just in my head when I saw her again. So that we could have this showdown because Nerissa's uh, trying to go I'm there and do some stuff with the weapons. She's got them aimed at La Serena. She's trying to set them. And just as she's about to do that, Seven shows up and she's like, nah, you ain't going to do that on my ship. And then... Bitch. Uh, yeah, sure. And then they're like, fight, 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 fight. Kick, 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 punch, punch, punch. Uh... Nerissa is going to be like, uh, hey, you're so sad, you old Borg. You should blow your brains out. You're worthless. I don't know why you live. You're half meat. Oh, she said you you would be pretty if you weren't half a half meat or something. Yeah, yeah. half meat, uh, a half meat sandwich monster or something Mon- like that. Probably. Mm, I could go for a half meat sandwich right now. Yeah. Not going to lie to you. I'm very hungry. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, they fight, they fight, they fight. And then she's like, you should just kill yourself. And then seven is like, well, then I wouldn't be around for this. And she goes, this one's for you. And then she Sparta kicks Nerissa off a ledge in. Nerissa dies horribly falling to her death. Go, 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 go. I regret nothing. Obviously. Uh, yeah, meanwhile, Gerardi and Picard are like, oh, we got warp signatures. And Picard's like, maybe it's Starfleet, but it's not. It's the Romulan fleet. It's 218 Romulan warships all sent here. Bit of an overkill, don't you think? To destroy this Capella station, this little town of synths. And so Gerardi and Picard come up with, you know, uh, an idea. Gerardi's like, what about the Picard maneuver where you make two ships look like they're in two different places? And he's like, this wouldn't work against this many people. We need many more ships. And Gerardi picks up the the tool that they were given by the synths and she wishes a plan into existence and that plan is going to happen. They, uh, something happens before that. Oh yeah, Soji continues to work on the transmitter. She can see La Serena in the, in the like, on the, on the sensors and uh that's right sensors she sensors. communicates with picard and picard's like you got to pound down the beacon i have something to give you in the hopes that we can we can move forward with this and so she's like oh what do you got that you could possibly give us and she's still working on the transmitter and picard's like my life it was powerful it's a cool moment it's a cool moment yeah. that's all i thought it deserved a, a beat 
Meanwhile, O is the general of the Romulan fleet, no longer just a Commodore. She's promoted herself. She's promoted herself. And she's got all the ships targeted on the, quote, nest. And Picard, meanwhile, says, Gerardi, are you ready? And will it all work? And she's like, yep. And he says, on my mark. And then they fly La Serena right in front of all the ships of the fleet, blocking them off. And then La Serena becomes hundreds of La Serenas, and the fleet is forced to engage with them. And it's working for a while. But then a, a shot does hit the actual La Serena, causing it to spin on a control. And then the fleet that they had created vanishes. And then Soji activates the beacon. And then a weird portal in the sky opens up. And... Uh, like uh, tentacle tentacle monsters basically they look like the uh sentinels from the matrix remember the scent you ever see the matrix they had they were like big heads with tentacles kind of what i thought was coming oh, yeah. through yeah, yeah, yeah. which is a weird choice but hey it's scary enough and and they got through and we don't know what happened we don't know because at that very moment a fleet of real Federation ships shows up, drops out of warp, and who's <laughs> aboard the flagship USS Zhang He? It is Captain Will Riker. Oh yeah. And he tells Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he tells Commodore slash General O, you have no right here. It is under Starfleet protection. O was like, no, we got here first. And Riker's like, uh 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 I got proof because we heard from Picard. La 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 la. And he's like, go ahead, make my day, basically. I'd love to kick your treacherous Tal Shiar ass. Uh, but then he's like, but or you can just stand down. And O is like, Psh, you can't tell me what to do. She's like, let's retarget on this armada and blow them to bits. And Riker's like, all right, shields up. Red alert, let's do this. Meanwhile, Picard is on La Serena. And guess what? His head hurts again. And he's, oh, he goes crazy and he falls down on his back. And uh, uh, Gerardi is like, oh, what are you going to do? And he's like, just uh, get me two cc's of something I'm not even going to try to pronounce. And he tells, open a channel to Soji on an open frequency. And so while O and Riker and I guess everyone in the fleet up in the sky is listening in, Picard is talking to Soji and he's like, you got to do the right thing. This is a choice for you. And he makes a compelling argument. Picard is all like the whole point of living was in meeting was so that we could save one another, destroy the beacon and we can we can have a choice. We can fight with choice and not just destroy one another. And uh he does it much more compellingly like that, even though he's about to have his brain explode. And Soji shuts down the beacon and the portal closes. And then O, seeing that uh, things are not going in her favor, is like, oh no, and withdraws. Uh, meanwhile, Riker's like, hey, La Serena, what's going up? Uh, we heard that you sent out that SOS. And Picard's like, oh, you showed up right on time. I thought you were making pizza, but I'm really glad that you're here. Uh, thanks for having my back. And uh, and then the fleet goes to warp and then Picard's like, all right, see you later. And he gets up from the captain's chair and collapses. And then Soji's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And then Gerardi tells him that the brain aren't abnormality is causing his body to fail. And Soji drops the transporter block and they beam Picard down to the antenna base. And that is where Picard lying on the ground says, you did it. You're right. You chose not to be the destroyer. You're the best. And he tells Rafi, yeah, you were right. And Rafi's like, about what? And then he dies. <gasps> or does he? Um, <laughs> because as everyone's mourning him and they're all sad, uh, and you think it's the end of the episode and everyone's kind of pairing up Rios and seven to nine are drinking on a beautiful cliff watching the sunset and talking about being warriors and and Rios was like oh, another self-righteous hard-ass old starship captain got into my heart and I had to watch him die and Seven's like did you do anything you could have done to prevent it and he's like no and she's like haha then I win and they watch the sunset uh and Rafi is approached by Elnor who just starts crying like a baby and she's like get it all out you can get it all out and then she starts mourning and then Picard wakes up in Chateau Picard, sitting in the study with a fireplace. And he's like, am I having another damn dream? But who else is there? <gasps> Data. Data enters. We never made a theme for Data. Because, well, but this is the end. So Data enters. Do you want, do you want the yeah, synth sure. right. sound? 
synth. Warning. Synth, synth, synth. Synthetic life form. And basically, they are able to talk because Data's part of his mind still exists in a quantum filament or something that what he transferred into before, right before he died at the end of Nemesis. And so he and Picard talk and Picard's like, I was furious that you gave up your life for me. And Data's like, well, but you gave up your life for the synths. And would you regret that? And Picard's like, absolutely not. Data's like, well, then why would you think I would do that? And the Picard's like, that was the most Data thing you could ever have done. And then Picard asks what's going on. And Data's like, we're in a weird simulation because my memory engrams uh, were recovered from that single neuron that Maddox had. And so his consciousness has been reconstructed by Sung. And Picard's like, I don't like the doctor. And Data's like, yeah, the Sungs are an acquired taste. And then they, you know, they basically have a heart to heart and they do some weird things talking about consciousness. It gets pretty heavy. And Data's basically like, hey, man, I think you're going to be all right. But when you get back, could you delete me? Because mortality is that final bridge to cross to become a human. And I would like to die. And Picard's like, okay. And then Picard wakes up. His consciousness has been transferred inside the golem that was intended for Sung. Sung gave up the golem for Picard and Soji and, and Sung and Jurati and everybody standing above him. And Picard's like, am I re... Very much a Wizard of Oz yeah. type moment. <laughs> you're all real. But instead of saying you're all real, he's like, am I real? Scarecrow. And they're like, you're totally real. You're in a robot now. Um, but they're like, hey, you got no superpowers. We're not going to make you live forever. You're just going to... You're just going to live without your brain exploding. Um, and then Picard's like, oh, great, wonderful. Oh, I have a promise to keep. And uh, inside the simulation, Data is still there alone. He's sipping wine at Chateau Picard, listening to Blue Skies. And Lab tells, uh, Lab, Picard tells everyone in the lab about what Data asks and everything. And he's like, uh, we, should, we should let him go. And then Picard, of course, quotes Shakespeare. And he deactivates the simulation, the engrams of Data. Data's uh, whole form just like dissipates. He turns into an old man and dies with Picard at his side. And it is over. Picard returns to La Serena. The crew is now Rafi, Rios, Jurati, Soji, and Elnor. And uh, he's like, hey man, time to go. And they all say, uh, you know, Soji's like, uh, she's going to leave it all behind. And she's like, I feel the urge to wander now that the synth ban has been lifted. And so Picard says he wants to wander as well. And Rios is like, are you ready? Picard looks around at his crew and says. Engage. Bah, bah, bah. Can I try it again? Yeah, Can I try sure. it again? And says. <clears throat> Engage. Here endeth season one of Star Trek Picard. That might have been my Woo. favorite moment so far. Oh uh, yeah, we really nailed yeah. that. <laughs> I was slightly off, I think. <laughs> uh, does it? Doesn't it does matter. not matter. No. Does not matter. Um. Shall we discuss and quotable moments oh, it up? I think we have many quotable moments. Ooh, quotable moments. Many quotable many. moments. That's how I should have done many it. Many quotable uh, moments. Oh, look mm. at you. Yeah. Easily reproduced. Now you go first. That way I don't step on your quotes. All right. All right. All right. All right, all right. Like I did last week. No, let's see. I, my, f- let's remember. I have a favorite, but I bet you didn't pick this one. I have, I have three. I'm going to go with three. We've got our phasers locked on your warp cores and nothing would make me happier than to kick your treacherous Tal Shiar ass. Great. But instead, I'm going to ask you one time to stand down. All right, Captain Riker. Riker. Oh, yeah. Hello. That, Hello. that for me was the best ass-kicking moment of probably <laughs> the whole season. <laughs> your treacherous was- Tal Shiar ass. We've got our phasers trained on your warp core. Um, yeah, Picard showing up in the next uh, Picard. Riker showing up mm. and being all Riker about it, too, was pretty great. And my next one was when Rios and Seven are, are chatting and they're like, oh, what would you not do again? And he says, 
Never again let another self-righteous, hard-assed, old starship captain into my heart. Never again stand there and have to watch him die. I've got faith on the heart. I know so where my heart will lead me. I've got faith. I've got faith. I've got faith. Yeah, let's go straight to the end. <laughs> let's not do the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to do the whole song. Um, one last one. Yeah, what was number three? A butterfly that lives forever is really not a butterfly at all. From the Commander Data. That was a beautiful, beautiful moment. Uh, mm. Worthy of the series mm. and the title. Et in Arcadia, ego. There, even in paradise, am I death. Uh, let's see. What did I really enjoy? I really loved the... I mean, I'll read this whole thing. When <laughs> when they're sitting around the campfire and they're like, Seb Chineb, do you know about Seb Chineb? Rafi's like, Seb Chineb? Yeah, yeah, we know about her. And then uh, <laughs> Narek is like, so you know that she has a horn from a great hell beast named Ganmadan? You know that she blows a blast on the horn and it will unleash Chiklank, Chikalaku, who have been waiting since there, since there since the beginning of time. You know the sky will crack, and through the crack in the sky, the Chikalagu will come ravening. You know about the thousand days of pain. You know the streets will be slick with the entrails of half devoured corpses. You know the worlds will burn, and the Chikalagu will feast and nurse their breaths on blood and pick their teeth with bones. And they're like, uh, no, we didn't know any of that. I thought that was great. Got a real picture of. <laughs> what it's like to be a Romulan child. Let's see. I mean, this is just a cute little moment when Picard's like, you haven't made me immortal. And, and Rafi's like, Oh, relax. Everyone was paying attention. We took care of you. And they're like, we designed a cellular homeostasis algorithm that should give you more or less the same number of years you have would have expected without the brain condition. And Picard says, I wouldn't have minded another 10, 20. Yes, <laughs> he's cute. He's so cute. He's so cute. And of course, the this is Sparta moment when uh, when Seb. Uh, is being taunted by Narissa, who knows so much about Seven of Nine for some reason. She's like, sad Queen Annika, six years old, and all she got for her birthday was assimilated. Why don't you just put a phaser to your head and get it over with? And Seven of Nine says, because I still had this to live for. This is for you! And then kicks Narissa to her death. The end. That's it. That's all you got. Those are mine. I also liked the whole, you know, I have one last thing to give you. And, and so she's like, what's that? And he's like, my life. Oh, the music swells. Um, yeah, it was a great episode. It was a great season. It was. And now we have, we have season two to look forward to with none other than Q. John Delancey. John Delancey. Well, so I was, I'm, conf well, not confused, but I'm thinking about those serpent things that came through the portal. Yeah. And now knowing that Q will be our big adversary in season two, I'm wondering whether they'll forget about the serpent like things that came through the portal mm -hmm. in favor of, ah, but we now have signed on Q or what, what they'll do in season two. Well, it's a good question because Q is going to show up, but I'm wondering... Are they going to be, bring our beloved crew back? Rios, mm. Rafi, Elnor, Soji. They're already filming. Rios is on set. Do you not watch the Star Trek Picard Instagram? Of like course I don't, because I don't like, you know I don't like spoilers. I can't even watch the after show because I hate spoilers. <laughs> I love the after show. I don't. So I can't. I know. And I appreciate that you can watch it. I'm just always terrified they're going to be like, and guess who's showing up in the next episode? I don't want to know. Mm. Don't tell me. I like knowing how the sausage is made. Sure. After all is said and done, sometimes I like to go back and watch the interviews. But I'm not going to watch those because they like to give you a little Easter egg for next week. And I like to approach it clean. You know, this is the second time we've watched this, though. True. I could then have watched the afters shows but but that, another thing to find in paramount plus i got things to do i got to type up these stupid notes 
Oh, one little one little thing that I did like that I did not notice the first time. Yeah. Was as we were pulling out on La Serena and we're looking mm-hmm. at the, the crew and then we, we kind of hone in on Picard as we're sort of coming in. We see uh, Rafi and Seven having a drink together. Oh, yeah. And did you see their fingers were interlacing? There was some interlocking fingers. I didn't fingers. see that. Oh, yeah. Interlocking fingers. I had to hit rewind well, to be like, did I see that? Do we have a new romance? I'll Brewing. have to look as well. Mm-hmm. Brewing. Brewing. Romance on La Sirena. It's a lot of people being with Looking people. Because now you, you got that that uh, little get together. You got the little uh, Girati Rios get together. And... Uh, I mean, I don't know what's going to go on. So G so and, and Narek, maybe Narek? I doubt they'll get together again. Narek's but... going to jail, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and Elnor, I don't think he's getting together with anybody. But what do I know? Mm. Anyway, I'm, I'm curious if the crew will be back. Well, I guess now we know. The crew will be back. Plus Guinan. Plus Sorry. Guinan. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's a genuine spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Sort of. I think that's it's already released. I think they talked about it ages yeah. ago. But still, Guinan and yeah. Q. Guinan and Q. Guinan and Q. And I, I think there's a little bit of um, there's some history there. Exactly. So that could be could be some interesting exploratory backstory. Some animosity, which we never yeah. really find out about in TNG, which and, we can yeah. now return to. Now we get to go into go deep into the Guinan Q Picardiverse and see what's going on, but also Rios doing his mini. Uh, sometimes good, sometimes awful accents, mm. and hopefully plenty of Rafi calling people Synthville and dumb heads and stuff like that. I'm super excited for season two, and I hope you are too. Oh, me? Yes, I am. I thought you were, thought you were talking to our yeah. listeners. And the listener. Dare I forget you? No, I dare not. And you, dear listeners, I hope you're excited for season two, too, Ooh. in 2022. Indeed. And, uh... How, are we are we done discussing the episode? I guess so, unless you have something further you'd like no, to say. No, I was just going to say, what are we doing next week, Aki? I don't know. I've no idea. Oh. Well, because we can't we really hit next time out. if we don't know what's next. Well, we can we can play the music and, and say we'll let people and know. figure it out. There will there be, will a, be next a next time. time. We just don't know what we'll be doing next. We do. But we'll be doing we something. We were doing, we were doing Lower Decks, or we might have an episode or two in between that we're going to be watch-alongs of some of the... Because we, might, we could do Nemesis. We could do like a watch-along of the movie. It's true, mm. of the movie. movie. We could also talk about some of the short tricks. Mm-hmm. Uh, that could be interesting. There's plenty to discuss, but we'll certainly get into Lower Decks because there will be a, no, a new season of Lower Decks later this this uh, summer. Indeed, right? well, maybe we should get on with that then. Well, we'll get on with it. Sorry. So bossy. <laughs> Next time on Set Phasers. That's right. Respect my authority. Thank you for joining us, dear listeners. If you enjoy the program, you can catch us every... Well, nope, that's not true because... Stevie's not, uh, we're not in the same place. You need to rewrite your copy. I do. (laughs) You can catch us every Friday in your dreams. Um, Thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed the program, you can listen to us as a podcast. We come out every Monday, wherever you get your podcasts from. And please rate and subscribe us and send more people to our, our podcast, our humble podcast. And go like us on Facebook. We need all of the likes and on the Instagram. Hashtag meme game strong. Yes, smash that like button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are at Set Phasers Podcast on all of the things. Uh, I'm going to just improvise and say, we have merchandise. We don't know where you can get it yet, but you should get it. Open your phone up and look at the episode notes and get some stuff. Yeah. Get some stuff. stuff. There's there's things for everyone. There's t-shirts, there's mugs with my face on it, with Aki's face on it, with neither of our faces on it. You can get whatever you like. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I drink mm. the no face one. I drink the no face cup. If you uh, also, if you don't want stuff, but you'd rather have, I don't know, company, uh, a sense of satisfaction, you can cons- you can support our continuing mission to discover what Star Trek has in store for us. We would only be delighted. You can patronize us. We can take it by going to patreon.com slash set phasers. And you can join us in our monthly watch parties and yes. become part of our podcasting and Netflix watch party community. Just a big old nerd jumble. Nerd party, really. Nerd party. Yeah. My girlfriend said to me, she's like, I'm so glad you have friends. Oh, me like, too. Thanks. Well, thanks, babe. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know what? I mean, that's good. It's good that you have friends with whom yeah. you can watch. Well, you got, you're my friend. I, I know. I've, our patrons are Okay. Okay. All right. I'm not... Maybe I went too far. Then this is really sounding quite sad. No, it's not sad. It's very happy. Up. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for listening. I am Stevie Manns. And I'm Aki Burmese. And this has been Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Computer. End program. Hmm?